life of Portgas the Ace. One Piece. Portgas the Ace, born as Gold the Ace and nicknamed Firefist Ace, was the sworn older brother of Luffy and Sabo, and the biological son of the late pirate king Goldie Roger and Portgas de Rouge. Ace was adopted by Monkey D. Garp, as had been requested by Roger before his execution. Ace was the second division commander of the Whitebeard Pirates and one-time captain of the Spade Pirates. Hunted by the world government for his lineage, Ace was captured and sentenced to death, which resulted in the Summit War of Marineford, an all-out clash of powers, Whitebeard's forces against the Marines and Seven Warlords. Ace was first shown during the Drum Island arc, but only got formally introduced in the Arabasta arc, where he acts as a brief ally of the Straw Hat Pirates. He is a central figure during the whole Summit War saga. He is also the protagonist of Ace's Great Blackbeard Search Cover Page Serial. Welcome to the Amagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Portgasty Ace. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Birth and Childhood Ace had gestated in the womb of his mother, Port Gasty Rouge, for five months when his father, Goldie Roger, was executed. To protect Ace, Rouge kept him in her womb for an additional 15 months, giving birth to him on Baterilla a year and three months after Roger's death, but dying from the exertion immediately afterwards. Ace was placed in the custody of Marine Vice Admiral Monkey D. Garp, who put him in the care of the Curly Dadan and the Dadan family on Mount Kalubo in Dawn Island. During his childhood, Ace would encounter people who voiced their hatred of Roger and any offspring he might have, causing him to feel alone and worthless. Once, this led him beating some of them to near death, shocking to Don. When Garp came to visit, Ace asked if he should have been born at all, and Garp replied he could only find that out by living. Ace later met Sabo on Grey Terminal, which Sabo claimed to be from. The two shared a dream of becoming pirates and stole money and treasure in preparation for the day that they would set off to sea. Tale of Three Brothers One day when he was 10, Ace returned home after hunting a buffalo when Garp brought his grandson Monkey D. Luffy to live with Dadon. When he saw Luffy, Ace spat on him. After the family ate the buffalo he caught, Ace ran off and Luffy chased after him, wanting to be friends. However, Ace sent a tree rolling at Luffy and when Luffy continued chasing him, Ace hit him and sent him plummeting into a chasm. It took a week for Luffy to return home but he continued chasing after Ace for the next three months, not giving up despite everything Ace threw at him. Ace met with Sabo one day, and they compared the treasure they had stolen when Luffy, having made it all the way to Grey Terminal, called out to them. Since he found out about their dream to become pirates, Ace and Sabo tied Luffy up and decided to kill him, but were unable to. Suddenly, poor Chemi of the Blue Jam Pirates came in, searching for Ace who had stolen his money. Porchemi captured Luffy, and to Ace's horror, Luffy called out to him. Porchemi took Luffy away to get Ace's location out of him, and Ace and Sabo worked to move their treasure to another location. When Sabo returned after moving the last of the treasure, he revealed that Luffy had not revealed Ace's location, to Ace's shock. He and Sabo then broke into the Blue Jam Pirates' hideout to rescue Luffy, and Porchemi grabbed Ace, but Sabo freed him before rescuing Luffy. Ace and Sabo stayed behind to fight Porchimi, defeating him. Afterwards, Ace asked Luffy why he risked death rather than revealing his location, and Luffy revealed that Ace was the only person he had. Since the trio's actions would make them well known to the pirates on Grey Terminal, Ace and Luffy brought Sabo into the Dadan family's household. The trio continued their adventures across the island, becoming more well known to an increasing number of people. They hunted animals and fought each other to grow stronger. One day, they snuck into the Goa Kingdom, where they ate at a restaurant and broke out without paying. As they were running away, Ace and Luffy saw a man calling out to Sabo, but Sabo denied any connection to him. However, when they returned to the woods, Ace and Luffy forced Sabo to tell them the truth. Sabo revealed that the man was his father, and he was the son of nobles, but left that life behind. The trio then proclaimed their dreams as they plotted their future pirating lives, and with a bottle of sake he had stolen from Dadan, 
Ace poured three cups, and the trio performed an informal Sakazuki ceremony to become sworn brothers. They continued their lives of adventure, visiting Fusha Village at one point and being visited by Garp on occasion, as he attempted to raise Ace and Luffy to become marines. They also moved out of Dadan's house to live in a treehouse. One day, however, Sabo's father, Outlook III, and the Blue Jam Pirates forcibly took Sabo. Ace tried attacking, but was punched away by one of the pirates. Outlook III told the pirates to do whatever they wished with Luffy and Ace while he took Sabo away, but Sabo promised to go without a fight if Ace and Luffy were spared. Afterwards, Blue Jam told Ace and Luffy that Sabo was fortunate to live the life of a noble, and kept his agreement to not harm the two by having them move boxes around Grey Terminal. That night, as they prepared to sleep, Luffy wondered if Sabo was alright, but Ace reminded him that they were trying to forget about him. A few days later, Blue Jam prepared to put Ace and Luffy to work, burning down Grey Terminal that night by order of the nobles. Ace and Luffy protested this, but Blue Jam ignored them and instead asked them about the location of their treasure. Afterwards, Ace and Luffy were tied to a pole, and as night fell, the Blue Jam pirates set Grey Terminal ablaze. As they were surrounded by flames, Ace cut himself and Luffy free with a shard, and they ran from the fire. However, the duo were confronted by the Blue Jam Pirates, who wanted to know the location of the treasure before it went up in flames. Ace eventually relented and told Blue Jam, but to his anger, the pirates took him and Luffy with them to make sure they were not lying. Blue Jam swore to take revenge on the nobles and said that Sabo was no different than the rest of them. This caused Luffy to fight back and get brutally attacked in return, and in desperation, Ace shouted at the pirates, unleashing Haoshoku Haki and knocking them all out except Blue Jam. Blue Jam subdued Ace and prepared to shoot him, but the Dadan family suddenly came in to rescue their wards. However, Ace refused to run away with them as he confronted Blue Jam, and Dadan stayed with him while Luffy and the rest of the family ran away. Ace and Dadan managed to defeat Blue Jam, but became surrounded by the flames. Dadan severely burned herself to get Ace through the flames, and Ace raided the town for medical supplies to keep her alive before they returned to the hideout. As she recovered, Dadan asked Ace why he did not run, and Ace reflected that he wanted to keep Luffy safe. Later, Dogra came and told Ace and Luffy that Sabo had gone out to sea only for his ship to be blown up by a world noble. Ace went to avenge Sabo, only for Dadan to force him down. Dadan said that the world killed Sabo and Ace would have no chance of avenging him until he grew stronger, ordering her family to tie him up. The next morning, Ace was released after calming down, and he received a letter from Sabo explaining his decision to set out to sea early, expressing his desire to meet his brothers again, and telling Ace to take care of Luffy in the meantime. Ace went to the coast, where Luffy was still crying. Luffy promised to get stronger and pleaded for Ace not to die. Ace promised not to, saying that since Sabo had been killed before he found freedom, they had to live their lives with no regrets, and they decided to each set sail as the pirates when they turned 17. As things returned to normal on Dawn Island, Ace and Luffy continued adventuring as they sought to become stronger and more independent, although they had first struggled to accomplish things without Sabo. One time, Makino visited Mount Kalubo, and Ace told her that he wanted to thank Shanks at some point for what he did for Luffy. The two brothers continued growing stronger together for the next seven years. The Path to Piracy At the age of 17, Ace set out from Mount Kalubo and began his life as a pirate. Less than a year after he started sailing, he was shipwrecked on the East Blue Island Sixus. There, he met a man without a name and gave the man a pseudonym of Mast Deuce. They talked about their families, and when Deuce brought up Roger, Ace's expression gave away his true heritage. With mixed feelings about Ace being Roger's son, Deuce left him. Several days later, Ace was still unsuccessful in getting off Sixus, and prepared to eat a fruit, which unbeknownst to him was the Mera Mera no Mi. A starving Deuce prepared to kill Ace for the fruit, but Ace spotted him after hearing his stomach growl and offered him the fruit. Deuce became guilty for his attempted plot and refused, but the two reconciled and formed a partnership. They split the Mera Mera no Mi, but Ace consumed it first, gaining its powers. They then worked together to build a ship to escape, building the Striker, which ran on Ace's flames. The two set out, forming the Spade Pirates. As time went on, the Spade Pirates increased to 20 crewmates in number as well as a lynx, 
and they became more and more infamous, being targeted by hordes of bounty hunters. One day, they were confronted by a marine warship battalion. The marine warships catch up to the Peace of Spadil and begin attacking, as Ansign Nailing Isuka had come on board earlier to distract the Spade Pirates from the warship's approach. Despite her strength, she could not harm Ace due to his Logia body. Meanwhile, Mass Deuce had a plan for the warships all along, leading them to a rocky reef area. Once one of the warships hits the rocky reef, it started to sink. Isuka quickly stopped fighting and jumped into the water to save her shipwrecked comrades, and as she started to tire and drown, Ace saves her life by throwing her a life preserver, and she's angry at his actions. From that day forth, she swore to chase down Ace. She would have numerous encounters with the Spade Pirates as a result, but Ace always easily dealt with her with a casual attitude. Incident at Saubaudi Archipelago Eventually, the Spade Pirates reached the Saubaudi Archipelago, where they had to wait three days for their ship to be coded. After encountering and eluding Isuka again, Ace and Deuce explored the archipelago. Ace tried the food at numerous stalls, which Deuce paid for with money from Ace's wallet, which he had dropped back on the ship, and they went on the Ferris wheel in Saubaudi Park. After their first ride, Isuka finds Ace and Deuce again while they're getting out of the Ferris wheel. As she and Ace quarrel, their gondola is locked and the three are sent on the ride. Though the mood is initially awkward, Ace was actually enjoying the view, and Isuka tells Deuce that the burn scar on her hand that he was staring at came from when pirates burned down her village when she was a child, during which her parents were killed. She had been saved from the fire by Lieutenant Commander Draw, who had since become a Vice Admiral. She now wants no children to go through the same experience as her. She recommends that Ace quit being a pirate, as she does not see him as evil. She even offered Ace the chance to become a Marine, but Ace does not like the idea of quitting piracy and jumps out of the gondola while the Ferris wheel is still in motion. Deuce wonders if Isuka will take him hostage to get Ace to come back, but she replies that Justice does not take hostages and that she's on holiday anyway. Three days later, Ace and Deuce come to the slums, where they feed some poor children. They were then approached by Isuka and Vice Admiral Draw, who gave Ace an official invitation from the world government to join the Seven Warlords of the Sea. Ace refused due to his disdain for the system, and although Draw shared his feelings, the Vice Admiral took the opportunity to kill him. Draw attacked with flamethrowers on his arms, setting the slums ablaze, which angered Ace as he went to rescue the children there. Isuka assisted him, and Ace attacked Draw, but struggled against the Vice Admiral's Busushoku Haki. Draw grabbed Ace by the neck and prepared to kill him, but Ace's flames caused Draw's fuel tank to explode, injuring both of them. Ace then started overwhelming Draw in the fight, awakening his Bosushoku Haki in the process, and after a final clash, he defeated the Vice Admiral. Ace then gave Isuka the opportunity to go on a ship and hunt him down in close quarters, but she refused, wanting to still be a Marine. Ace and Deuce returned to their ship as it left Saubaudi, bidding a final farewell to Isuka. Journey into the New World after reaching the New World, Ace hunted down Shanks in order to fulfill his intention of meeting him. He discovered Shanks and his crew on a winter island and revealed his connection to Luffy. He declared his intention to grow his reputation by bringing down most figures of power and asked Shanks about the scars Blackbeard had given him before departing from the island. One time, four years before the current timeline, Ace went to Amigasa village at Wano country and befriended the villagers after letting them acquire his food and water. He met a little girl named Tama and formed a bond with her. During his stay, he learned how to weave a kasa. Tama wanted to go out to sea with Ace, but he told her that she was too young at the time. He promised that he would take her with him if she became a kunoichi by the time he returned. Also during this time, Ace and his crew went to Onigashima to kill Kaido and rescue the abducted children. However, Kaido was away on an expedition at the time, so Ace never encountered him or any of his top subordinates. After doing so much damage to Kaido's castle, Ace met Yamato, who decided to fight him because of boredom. During the scuffle, Yamato broke the dragon statue at the island's entrance to show disdain for Kaido. Ace then left a mark on the statue and took responsibility for breaking it. Afterwards, Ace and Yamato became acquainted. While drinking sake together, Ace told Yamato about Luffy and his dream. Before parting ways, Yamato gave Ace a Vivra card becoming Whitebeard's son. 
As he searched the seas for Whitebeard, he plotted to take advantage of another attack on the Emperor to strike at him while his crew was weaker, and he and his crew went on to one of Whitebeard's islands, which they had heard he was headed for. However, they were confronted by Jinbei, who had been following them around. Angered at Ace burning Whitebeard's flag on Fishman Island, Jinbei intended to battle him to prevent him from going after Whitebeard. The battle lasted for five days and ended in a stalemate, with both combatants collapsing from exhaustion. Whitebeard, who had heard that Ace intended to take his head, arrived with his crew and the Moby Dick just after the battle between Jinbei and Ace. Whitebeard told his crew that he alone would be enough and proceeded to attack Ace's crew. Still exhausted from his fierce battle with Jinbei, Ace got to his feet and cut off Whitebeard from his crew with a wall of flames. Though his battered crew protested, he commanded them to run while he stalled Whitebeard. The older pirate accused Ace of being a coward now that he was actually face to face with the world's strongest, but Ace clarified that he just didn't want his allies to get hurt in a fight that he had been seeking. Whitebeard easily defeated the rookie. On the brink of death, Ace was offered by Whitebeard to join his crew, becoming one of his sons. Ace fiercely refused, but was knocked out and dragged onto Whitebeard's ship nonetheless. Ace's crew later came to retrieve him, though they were beaten up by his captors and abducted onto the ship with their captain. When Ace came to, he was already acknowledged as one of Whitebeard's crew. To make sure that his crewmates stayed alive, Ace remained aboard Whitebeard's ship. However, on many occasions, counted to be at least a hundred, he attempted to murder the old man, though each time was repelled with little effort from Whitebeard. Eventually, tempted by Marco's description of the crew's father-son relationship with Whitebeard, Ace gave in and accepted Whitebeard's mark on his back, becoming a member of the Whitebeard Pirates and a subordinate of Whitebeard. After defeating Doma and forcing him to surrender, he was promoted to the position of 2nd Division Commander. He and one of his subordinates, Teach, were on relatively good terms. Ace asked if Teach had wanted the commoner position himself, as he was certainly strong enough and had seniority. Teach just laughed and said that he had no interest in moving up the ladder. One day, Ace decided to reveal his lineage to Whitebeard, who merely laughed it off, saying that his personality was nothing like that of Roger. According to Sengoku, Whitebeard had already knew. When Ace asked if Whitebeard would kick him out due to him and Roger being enemies in the past, Whitebeard simply stated that his past does not matter, as everyone is a child of the sea. At one point, Ace gave the casa he made in Wano to Little Ors Jr. to protect him from the sun. At some point, Ace talked with Whitebeard and some other crewmates about going to war with Kaido in order to liberate Wano country and avenge Kozuki Odin. Unfortunately, Whitebeard never approved of this request, fearing the vast number of casualties that would almost surely come from a war between two emperors. At another point, Ace showed Whitebeard Luffy's first wanted poster. Then, one day, Teach murdered his crewmate Thatch in order to obtain the Yami Yami no Mi Devil Fruit, which he had his sights on, and fled. Since Ace was his commander and the Whitebeard pirates live by a code which means they must avenge a fallen comrade, Ace would have been sent after the murderer. Whitebeard, however, felt apprehensive about the situation and protested, acknowledging that Teach may have become too much for the boy to handle with his new powers. Despite this, Ace demanded that he go after Teach, saying that Thatch could not rest in peace if his murderer were not brought to justice, and that Teach could not get away with dishonoring his father. Admiring Ace's dedication to both his captain and his duty, Whitebeard allowed his son to go, claiming that it was he who told Ace to leave for the sake of Ace's honor. With this, Ace began his journey to find Blackbeard and finish him off. Drum Island Arc Ace visited Drum Island and left a message for Luffy to meet him in 10 days in the city of Nanohana, Arabasta. In the anime, the reason he was in Arabasta in the first place was to gain information from Scorpion about Blackbeard, something which Scorpion was lying about to draw him out. Arabasta Arc Ace was sleeping in the Spice Bean Restaurant. The other patrons thought that he had dropped dead from eating a desert strawberry. As Ace finished his meal, he was spotted by Smoker, who attempted to arrest him. However, shortly before he and Smoker began to fight, both men were sent flying into the wall behind them by Luffy's sudden entrance. After picking himself up, Ace spotted Luffy eating, only to be knocked down by Smoker, who then attempted to arrest Luffy. After Luffy dashed out of the restaurant with Smoker in hot pursuit, Ace caught up with Luffy in time to save him from being arrested. 
His interference allowed Luffy to escape while he dealt with Smoker himself. After throwing the Marines off his trail, Ace caught up with Luffy on the Going Merry to offer him a chance to join Whitebeard, which Luffy refused. Ace accompanied the Straw Hats on their journey to Yuba. Ace left Luffy a piece of a Vivre card, which allowed the two to meet up again. As Ace sailed away, five Baroque work ships confronted him, but he destroyed all of them with a fire punch. Sky Island Saga Ace later hopped on Buggy's ship for food and promised to show him the way to Luffy. After parting ways with Buggy's crew, he infiltrated a marine base to deliver a letter to the parents of a milkmaiden who saved his life. Despite being exposed, Ace was able to escape with vital information on Blackbeard that he took from the marines. He also successfully delivered the letter, which indirectly led the parents to reunite with their daughter. Water 7 Saga Ace finally found and confronted Blackbeard and his crew on Banero Island. He and Blackbeard exchanged a few words before Blackbeard offered him the chance to join his crew and help him become Pirate King. However, when Blackbeard revealed that he was intending to go to Water 7 and capture Luffy, Ace got angrier as he refused, revealing his relationship with Luffy. Von Arger then shot at him, but Ace had the bullets pass through him before retaliating with fire bullets. Jesus Burgess threw part of a hotel at him, but Ace demolished it with a pillar of fire before attacking the two of them and Blackbeard with Heken. Blackbeard admitted that he had killed Thatch, revealing that he had done it to claim the Yami Yami no Mi. Ace watched as Blackbeard became darkness and pulled the entire town into a black hole before releasing it as wreckage, but he immediately unleashed several small fiery explosions that injured Blackbeard due to his fruit amplifying damage rather than bypassing it. However, Blackbeard used his darkness to pull Ace toward him and nullify his devil fruit powers, allowing Blackbeard to punch Ace. Ace was pulled in again by Blackbeard's darkness, but managed to hit Blackbeard with an attack before Blackbeard broke his neck. As the two continued to clash, Blackbeard began to physically overwhelm Ace and once again offered him the chance to join his crew. Ace refused again and brought out a massive fireball as he engaged in a massive final clash with Blackbeard's darkness. Summit War Saga After being defeated by Blackbeard, Ace was brought into the world government and incarcerated in level 6 of Impel Down before he was sentenced to public execution at Marineford. Some days later, he was visited by Garp. Ace expressed his desire to be killed now, but Garp replied that there was no stopping the oncoming war between the Marines and Whitebeard. The two talked about Garp's wish for Ace and Luffy to become Marines, with Ace reflecting on his and Luffy's bloodlines, though mentioning his hatred for his father and how he considers Whitebeard his true father. Sometime later, Ace watched as Jinbei, who was in the cell with him, was beaten by the prison guards for defiance, and heard Jinbei's wishes to end the upcoming fighting. Jinbei told Ace how Whitebeard protected his homeland of Fishman Island from pirates, but the two heard Crocodile and many other level 6 prisoners hoping for Whitebeard's death. Boa Hancock later visited Ace and discreetly informed him that Luffy was an impel down trying to save him, much to Ace's dismay. When Luffy fought against the Warden Magellan, Ace suspected Hancock's words to be true, asked the guards what was going on, but got no answer. Many hours later, Jinbei told Ace that Hancock might have been lying, but Ace bitterly replied that this was the kind of thing his brother would do. Sometime during his imprisonment, Ace told Jinbei that he had seen Luffy for the first time in three years and was relieved to see that Luffy had found a crew of great friends to protect him. Ace also asked Jinbei to look after Luffy if he died, though Jinbei warned that he did not easily help other pirates. Magellan then came down to transport Ace to Marineford for his execution and they had gone up to level 1 when Ace overheard a report of Luffy being subdued with sleeping gas in level 6. He cried out and tried to move back to the lift, forcing Magellan to subdue him. He was put on a marine fleet in the custody of Vice Admiral Onigumo, who encouraged him to look up at the sky one last time before he was put on the execution platform as the fleet approached the Gates of Justice to Marineford. After reaching Marineford, Ace remembered his childhood with Luffy, as he was brought up to a large set of stairs to the execution platform. Ace was put on his knees at the execution platform while the Marines awaited the arrival of Whitebeard. To start the anticipated event, Sengoku asked Ace who his father was. Ace mentioned that it was Whitebeard, but Sengoku then revealed Ace's real father to the world and explained how Rouge had kept Ace safe through her pregnancy. 
Sengoku then explained how Whitebeard had protected Ace for the latter to become Pirate King, despite Ace's denial, but Sengoku said that Ace's bloodline necessitated his death. The Whitebeard pirates then arrived, and Ace called out to Whitebeard. He asked his crew why they had come, since it was his fault he went after Blackbeard and got captured. However, Whitebeard claimed that he had ordered Ace to go after Blackbeard. Ace watched as his crewmates rushed into battle, but when Little Ors Jr. came onto the scene, Ace told the giant to stop because he was too big of a target. He cried out when Ors Jr. was severely injured by Bartholomew Kuma, and watched in dread as the giant pressed on despite receiving injuries in quick succession, but ultimately fell short of reaching the execution platform. As the battle continued, Ace watched as Garp refused to enter the fray, with the Vice Admiral expressing bitterness over the path his adopted grandson chose in life. Ace then spotted a battleship containing Luffy and other prisoners of Impel Down falling out of the sky. Ace and Luffy called out to each other when they saw the other, and as Luffy raced from the Moby Dick to the execution platform, Ace told him not to interfere, trying to alienate himself from Luffy to keep him safe. However, Luffy responded that he did not care and would rescue his brother no matter what. Ace was then calm as he stated that he would accept whatever ended up happening to him out of respect for his crew's efforts. Ace watched in shock as Whitebeard was betrayed and stabbed by Squard, and was still taken aback as Whitebeard handled the injury and joined the battle himself. Whitebeard unleashed a shockwave at the execution platform, but it was blocked by the three admirals' hockey, and Ace later watched as the Marine's attempts to raise a giant wall between him and his crew was sabotaged by Orange Jr.'s body. With the wall still mostly trapping the Whitebeard pirates, the Marines prepared to execute Ace ahead of schedule, but Ace watched as Oris Jr. regained consciousness and attempted to rescue him again while Luffy was sent over the wall by a water blast. The executioners began to move their swords to execute Ace, but they were taken out by Crocodile's sand blasts. Ace then watched in shock as Oris Jr. pushed the Whitebeard Pirate's remaining ship through the wall to let the crew return to the plaza, though at a further cost to the giant. With the battle resuming, Marco attempted to rescue Ace, but was punched away by Garp. Ace then put his head down and started weeping as he saw all the pirates in front of him being dedicated to saving his life, which many others had considered worthless, and he watched as Luffy unleashed a giant cry after receiving a dose of hormones from Emporio Ivankov. Although Whitebeard showed weakness from his age and was punished by the admirals, Ace watched as his captain continued to press on. The executioners, having returned, raised their blades to try to execute Ace again, but they were suddenly knocked out by Luffy unleashing Hao Shoku Haki. Ace sat stunned by Luffy's Haki before he watched as Inazuma created a ramp for Luffy to run to the execution platform. And although Garp confronted Luffy, the Vice Admiral was taken out in one punch as Luffy reached Ace. Sengoku then prepared to attack Luffy with his Devil Fruit power as Kizaru destroyed the key to Ace's handcuffs. But after regaining consciousness, the nearby Galdino was ordered to protect Ace with a wax barrier, while Luffy absorbed Sengoku's punch. The force of the punch caused the execution platform to fall, and the Marines fired cannonballs at Ace and Luffy. But after Galdino made a wax key to unlock Ace's handcuffs, Ace was freed and used his devil fruit powers to shield himself and Luffy from the explosion. After landing on the ground, Ace and Luffy quickly went to work fighting off the Marines in tandem. When Aokiji stepped in, Ace met the Admiral's ice powers with his fire. However, the brothers were taken aback as Whitebeard proclaimed to his crew that he would stay behind on Marineford while they escaped. Ace initially did not move after this proclamation, and Whitebeard asked him if he had been a good father, which Ace resolutely affirmed. Ace and Luffy then ran off with Jinbei, but Admiral Kainu stepped in, saying that Whitebeard was a failure and that his crew were scum and cowards. Angered at Akainu's statements about Whitebeard, Ace went back and attacked him, but was overwhelmed due to Akainu's magma fruit being superior to his own fire. Akainu then ambushed an unsuspecting Luffy, and Ace stepped in front of the Admiral, whose magma fist went through his torso and burned up his insides. With Ace still alive in the aftermath, Akainu prepared to attack him again, but was intercepted by Jinbei. The dying Ace fell into Luffy's arms, and he recollected how he had been first given a place with Luffy, Sabo, and Dadan as he remembered a childhood otherwise filled with torment and persecution. 
He only regretted that he would not be able to see Luffy's dream come to pass. And then he called out to his crew, thanking them for loving him despite his bloodline and faults. After this, he fell to the ground and passed away with a smile on his face. Postmortem. Ace's death left many heartbroken, but none more so than Luffy, who fell into a catatonic state, which left him unable to respond to the world around him. Akainu prepared to kill Luffy as well, but was blocked by Marco while Jinbei carried Luffy to safety. Marco then yelled to the other Whitebeard pirates to protect Luffy at all costs so that Ace's sacrifice would not be in vain, giving them the energy to keep on fighting. Whitebeard himself was especially outraged by Ace's demise and proceeded to deal a heavy blow on a Kainu, which also devastated Marine Ford. Later, when the Red Hair Pirates appeared, Shanks managed to organize a ceasefire and asked that the bodies of both Ace and Whitebeard, who was killed by Blackbeard and his crew, be handed over to the pirates so that they could depart from the location peacefully, a request which Fleet Admiral Sengoku allowed. Ace, along with Whitebeard, was buried on an island near the latter's home island somewhere in the New World. His trademark hat, necklace, and knife were made into a grave marker, which was placed beside Whitebeard's and covered with flowers and swords left behind by his crewmates, with the members themselves standing on either side of the island, paying their last respects. Before departing with his crew, Shanks thought of how he was surprised by Ace's final sacrifice and likened it to something of his late captain Roger would have done. Legacy. Although already famous in life, the events of the war and the fact that he was the son of the Pirate King has given Ace almost legendary recognition, like his father before him. Luffy, who awoke from his coma in complete and utter despair over his brother's death, most likely would have given up his dream as well as living if it weren't for Jinbei reminding him of his crewmates, who were depending on him to return to them. Ace's death also proved to be the final debacle for Luffy's resolve to become stronger before heading into the New World, next to his crew's defeat and separation at the hands of Bartholomew Kuma. Similar to Luffy, Sabo was distraught over his inability to protect Ace from death. Sabo initially lost his memories prior to being attacked by St. Jalmak, but then recovered them upon learning of his brother's demise, which put him into a coma for three days. Since then, Sabo gained an immense protective streak over Luffy, vowing to come to his aid whenever and wherever he needed him, even going so far as to disregard his duties in the Revolutionary Army if he felt Luffy was in danger. Ultimately, Whitebeard's prediction that someone would appear to inherit Ace's will came to fruition when the Mera Mera no Mi was eaten by Sabo, who gained his brother's devil fruit powers and also inherited his signature technique, the Hiken. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.